In today's video, you're gonna learn about selectors in recoil. If you haven't seen my videos on just a general overview of recoil, as well as recoil atoms, I would watch those prior to watching this one. But diving into selectors here, so what, what is a selector within recoil? Well, a selector is a pure function that accepts atoms or other selectors as an input. And a pure function is a function that if you give it the same inputs, it will always have the same outputs, all right? So a selector, it takes atoms and other selectors as inputs, and it's always gonna have the same output here, all right? And it says, when these upstream atoms or selectors are updated, the selector function will then be reevaluated. Components can subscribe to selectors just like atoms and will then be re-rendered when the selectors change. All right, so within a component, instead of just bringing in a recoil atom or a piece of state, you can actually use a selector. And that is gonna be very similar to using a recoil atom or a piece of state, but that selector is actually gonna derive some data based off state. And that's actually what it goes into here in this next sentence. It says, selectors are used to calculate derived data based on a certain piece of state. And the meaning of derived is coming from or caused by something else. So the selector is gonna generate a value that is caused by something else. And this something else is gonna be another piece of state. So you are gonna use within your selectors some other state to form some new state. You're gonna derive some new state based on some other state. And it says that this lets us avoid redundant state because a minimal set of state is stored in atoms. While everything else is efficiently computed as a function of that minimal state. So it's saying you can almost use less state overall in your application by deriving state. And I think this is something that Dan Abramoff also talks about, who is like very big in the React space about how generally best practice to derive your state rather than just creating a bunch of new different pieces of state. And then it says, since selectors keep track of what components need them and what state they depend on because you are deriving a certain value from a certain state, so it depends on a certain state, they make this functional approach very efficient. From the point of components, selectors and atoms have the same interface and can therefore be substituted for one another. And I'll show you an example of this in just a second. And it says selectors are defined using the selector function. So here, this is how you create a selector within recoil. They are creating a selector called font size label state, and they are assigning it to the return value of calling the selector function that you can import from recoil. And then to the selector function, they pass it an object. And this object contains two properties. A key, just like when you create your atoms, you need a unique global key. And it also has a getter or a get property. And this get property is going to be your selector function. And here you can see that they pass an inline function to this get property and recall is automatically going to pass an object to this function and they destructure a get property from the object that is passed to this get function. And then what they do is they generate a couple different values here. So they say const font size is equal to the font size state and they call their get method to get the font size state. So in earlier examples, we created this font size state using this atom here. So we have an atom or a slice of state that is our font size state. And then this get method here within this selector is going to allow us to get any state. This could be our font size state. It could be any other atom that we created. So we get our font size state and then we create a const unit that is assigned to the value of pixels. And then we return our font size and that unit. So here we are deriving a font size for our label from our font size state. So instead of creating an entirely new atom to do this, we just create a selector 
that uses the font size state using this get method that recoil automatically passes to this selector function. And then we generate a unit for this font size, and then we return that. And recoil will go on to kind of explain what I just explained. So they say, the get property is a function that is to be computed. It can access the value of atoms and other selectors using the get argument passed to it. This argument right here. When it accesses another atom or selector, a dependency relationship is created such that updating the other atom or selector will cause this one to be recomputed. So whenever this font size state is regenerated or this value changes, we are going to recompute this function here and it's going to rerun this function and it's going to regenerate this font size label state here because it depends on this font size state right here. It says in this font size label state example, the selector has one dependency, the font size state atom. Conceptually, the font size label state selector behaves like a pure function that takes a font size state as an input and returns a formatted font size label as an output. All right, so that is how you use a selector to generate some value off of some other state. You're deriving this state. Now, how can you actually use this selector within your components? Well, it says selectors can be read using the use recoil value hook, which takes an atom or a selector as an argument and returns the corresponding value. We don't use the re use recoil state hook as font size label state selector is not writable. All right, so when you use a selector to get a certain value, it's best to use the use recoil value hook because that will just allow you to have the value. You won't be returned a function to update that value. And the reason for that is because these selectors aren't writable. You can't update your selector within one of your components like this. All right. And then within this font button component, you can see an example of we have our font size state that is being used using the use recoil state hook. And that's going to return an array of your current font size and a way to update that font size. But for our font size label state selector, we actually pass that one into the use recoil value hook. And here you can see us passing that selector into this hook as an argument here. And then that's just going to return the value font size label. And this value here is going to be the value that is returned from this get property on our font size label state selector. And then you can see this font size label is used right here just to display the current font size. All right. And then here at the end, it says when we use this button here to increase the font size and we set the font size value to its current value plus one, that is also going to recompute the font size label state and update this value because this value is dependent on this font size state right here. All right, so a selector within recoil is a pure function. It takes an atom or another selector as an input, and then its output is going to be some derived data based on some other state or some other selector. And this prevents having some redundant state and makes things a bit more efficient in your application. And then whatever that selector is dependent on, it is going to re-render or re-update that value whenever the value that it depends on changes. And then you can use it in your programs using the use recoil value hook and then passing in the selector as your argument to that hook. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how selectors work. In my next video, we're going to put this all together in an example of installing recoil, using different atoms, using selectors, and kind of showing you how it all works.